Good morning, folks. We've got space weather, news on the planet, stellar flares, and more. Plus, we have some announcements at the end. We are starting, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com and zooming in on 193 angstroms of ionized iron, where we find the last 24 hours on our star with most of the activity on the south, where we focused in the opening sequence. There were filament eruptions as the solar flaring took a day off. Sunspot group is distending latitudinally and could destabilize today. The southern hemisphere of the sun refused to let the lack of flaring hold it back. Numerous filaments left the sun and some of their ejecta is almost certainly coming at Earth. The filaments did not directly eject at our planet, but glancing blows off what are minor to moderate CMEs anyway should be on the way. It would be nice to track them on the Enlil spirals. NOAA's shows precisely zero CMEs on their tracker, which is frustrating, but I can tell you we do have impacts coming and they should be expected to be minor to moderate, just like they have been the last week and a half to two weeks. Let's head right into the science where we first look back at the baseline magnetic field measurements by Messenger at Mercury. These will soon provide the first opportunity to see if Mercury is changing as a planet as well when Bepi Colombo gets a look at its magnetic field. We have been able to track direct or indirect changes to all the planetary systems around our star except for Mercury, which requires comparing in situ results. Sticking with the planetary changes, good article out about the Mars quake program and how they have a lot to learn. For those who don't remember, the papers and reviews have described how there is an increasing frequency of the events and the scientists have not figured out why, or why there is an annual pattern to the Mars quakes. Nice little dive back into its physical activity. Up next, it's time to slap climate science with the white glove. Observers know that particle forcing and magnetic field coupling are the future of solar climate forcing science, but it appears we can use the same irradiance values to track the working of the global electric circuit. We not only have flaring and geomagnetic effects, but beyond the X-ray production, it is shown that the UV variations during these events contribute electrically via nitrogen interactions. This basically doubles the solar input before you ever get to those particles or field couplings. One hopes we remember this paper from earlier this year, top 10 of all time as the identification we had long awaited of the subharmonics of the sun's 12,000 year cycle were identified, the 6,000 and 3,000 year cycles, broken down, quantified in terms of energy release. And this paper has been cited in another one recently and which studies the flaring of sun-like stars and not only comes up with the same maximum range of 10 to the 34 or 35 ergs for our star, but on another star, they saw one at 10 to the 36, which they say needs a different mechanism, and you're into micronova territory there. Lastly, on the article front, nearly everything we can identify about geomagnetic jerks or solar storms causing glitches in the length of a day, Earth's rotation speed, is founded on our understanding of which variations are supposed to be there. This is how we know the anomalies are indeed anomalies, and we've got more on that foundational vein here as they break down the regular subdecadal cycles and enter annual variability. Folks, many of you know our plan for the future, both short term and long. I went down to Albuquerque this week to bring the mobile observatory up to Observer Ranch where it will find its permanent home. We have given ObserverRanch.com a major upgrade, by the way. It is pretty well simplified with the key information easier to find, only three sections to choose from to learn about what we have going on, and the last one, by the way, is the only way to pre-order Kira and Lulu Visit the Milky Way, the third in the trilogy. I also have a link for that in today's list below the video. And if you click to learn more where you see the cows that lived on the property this spring, this will get you information on plans for the education center and campground, where we'll learn, meet, engage, enjoy, the timelines. And this is also where you will learn about long-term spots at the ranch, whether it's coming and going as you please, access to every special event and special guest like Randall Carlson, August Dunning, or Robert Felix, or those who are planning to live there full time. We only have six spots left. Six. Yes, this is our plan for now and for tomorrow, if you know what I mean. ObserverRanch.com. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.